announcement today. Harry's cousin Zara Tyndall gave birth to a baby boy on Sunday. Her husband Mike Tyndall says there was no time for the hospital. He grabbed a gym mat and she gave birth on the bathroom floor. Kelly Kobiella, NBC News, London. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. It is a significant day for Georgia in the fight to stop COVID. We're going to look at how the expanded vaccine rollout is going so far. And the community in Boulder, Colorado, coming together to grieve and support the victim's loved ones after a mass shooting at a grocery store. And today, Georgia lawmakers are expected to vote on a controversial election bill. What Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock says it will have implications in Georgia. First, we are bracing for another round of severe weather today, a chance for hail, damaging winds, even isolated tornadoes. Meteorologist Chesley McNeil is tracking these storms. Walk us through the timeline here, Chesley. Yeah, it's all possible for us, Cheryl. Take a live look here over toward Rome. It's not raining there yet, but you can see the darkening skies here as we look back off to the west. Uh, that rain is headed in that direction. Now, we've already had some severe weather up here to the far northwest. Uh, that has subsided just a bit, and you can see the storms were stronger over toward the west, but now starting to push a little bit further over toward the east, weakening as it moves over towards, say, Blue Ridge, but you got some very heavy rain associated with it, a few lightning strikes associated with it as well, so we'll continue to monitor that. Now, it won't be until later this afternoon. There's a cold front that we're tracking. A little bit further back off to the west, we'll move a little bit closer. we got a warm front that's lifting to the north as well, and once you get in between the cold and the warm front, that's where you have the, the most... Uh, for lack of a better phrase, a juicier atmosphere, more moisture and heat. And so that's going to apply some energy to some of these thunderstorms. And so we're expecting that severe weather to really start to get active, especially back off here to the west over toward parts of Mississippi, Alabama and Tennessee. That is where we have a level five out of a possible five, a high risk for severe weather. You're talking long track tornadoes here, and that could extend into our state. That's something I have to watch out for if we see it. I think it'll be mainly up here to the north and west. Now you see the level four extends into Dayton Walker counties. That is a moderate risk for severe weather. The enhanced risk from Rome extends all the way down into northwest Paulding County. The yellow indicates uh, a slight risk for severe weather. It's a level two for the Atlanta metro area. Then east of that, it becomes a level one for Athens further on down toward the Macon area. What does that mean for us? Well, some of those thunderstorms that come through could produce or will produce some damaging winds. We're talking winds up to about 60, 70 miles per hour. Hail up to an inch is possible and tornadoes. There'll be isolated tornadoes, uh, maybe not as long tracked as the ones that we'll see back off to the west but certainly we'll be watching for that and saying not saying those aren't possible either but if we see some of those it'll be like one or two in the area here it is our forecast track model shows uh cheryl you mentioned the timing we're thinking uh, most of the heavy rain will stay up here to the north through this afternoon you notice the atlanta metro area and down to the south uh we're catching a break but then once we get toward the evening that's when that front gets a little bit closer and we'll see that strong line begin to push through that's where we can see those very strong winds again those winds up to about 60 70 miles per hour we got the qr code right here on the screen folks you want to download our app Go ahead and put it on your camera uh, on your phone and point it at that QR code and it'll automatically download your app or at least show you the steps to get that and all the alerts that you can get because this is going to come through in the night. You can see by 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock closer to midnight moving through the metro area and stays with us to about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning before it begins to subside further down to the south. We'll hold on to the threats for rain, especially in the southern portions of our state uh, or of our uh, county area until about um, the afternoon on Friday. Also notice the flash flood watch that remains in effect through 8 a.m. Friday. That includes our northernmost counties and extends all the way down now into Floyd County. We got Bartow County and Cherokee County has just been added to that and also Polk County as well. Generally speaking, anywhere from one to three inches of rainfall possible. Uh, there could be some locally higher amounts, maybe up to four inches in some spots. So a lot of things we have to watch out for. Time now is to get weather ready. Make sure you prepare yourself. Give yourself between, uh, I'd say, five o'clock tonight into 2 a.m. Friday or for the severe weather to push through our forecast area. We're going to talk more about it in the full forecast coming up. Cheryl, back to you. All right, we'll see you then, Chesley. Thank you. Right now, there are a lot of people in Georgia trying to book a COVID-19 vaccine appointment now that everyone 16 and older is eligible in our state. So that's about 8 million Georgians who can now get a shot, roughly 75% of our state's population. Joe Ripley is live at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Joe, this is the largest vaccination site, and if there are a lot of people there in lines, that's something doctors are extremely encouraged about. How's it going? 
Absolutely, and not only are there long lines, Cheryl, they're getting through pretty quickly. We spoke with a number of people who said the process here was very smooth, nothing like the DMV, if that gives you any perspective. Uh, they're coming in waves, like I said, uh, folks spending about half an hour here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium getting their vaccine. The process pretty orderly, according to a lot of people I spoke with, uh, about ha half an hour, again, in and out, and half of that time, the 15-minute waiting period to see if there's any reaction to folks taking the COVID-19 vaccine. Let me show you some video of earlier this morning when we first got here to the bins. The site first opening around 9 o'clock. People I spoke with said there weren't any major issues in booking their vaccine appointment, and you can do that through the Department of Public Health website along with myvaccinegeorgia.com. And since this morning when there were some issues, My Vaccine Georgia has updated its site now to include people 16 and older in its registration. I caught up with Evan Fonts, who booked his appointment early online and said his experience was efficient. Last year was, you know, rough for us all. I had to leave what I was doing in my uh, profession. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a wave of relief. Honestly, you know, uh, I've got a mother who I'm, you know, I want to see and, uh, you know, I'm doing it for her. The Georgia Department of Public Health sent us this statement on the eligibility expansion, saying in part, quote, vaccinating all Georgians and following basic prevention measures offer the best protection from COVID-19 and will help stop the spread of infection in our state. We all look forward to getting back to our normal pre-COVID lives, and these are the tools that will get us there, end quote. We do want to know about your experience. If you've run into any issues trying to book a vaccine appointment or at a vaccination site, be sure and email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com. All right, Joe, be interesting to hear people's experiences. So everyone, once again, 16 and older, now eligible for the vaccine in Georgia. Colleges are hoping for a return to a more normal campus life as a result. And many Georgia universities say they're trying to make that vaccination process as easy as possible for students and anyone who works on campus. So Georgia State, Georgia Tech, the University of Georgia, and Emory University are all planning to offer the vaccine right there on campus. Each university has created a place for students and staff to register for an appointment based on availability. A Kennesaw State student tells us she thinks the vaccine is the only way to get back to a typical campus life. If somebody like asked me like nine months ago if I wanted to get the vaccine, I probably wouldn't have said yes. But now after seeing other people get it, and like people that I trust, like my grandparents, uh, I see that there that it does it is helping and it is working. And I feel like in order to get back to like normalcy, with what a lot of people say, uh, I feel like the vaccine is where we need to start uh, to get to that point. All right, some momentum there as far as the vaccine rollout. The pandemic did take a lot from college students like Beatrice. She had to cancel her study abroad trip and her internships. We've also reached out to Spelman, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta about their plans to vaccinate students. And as soon as we have more information to share, we will post it for you on 11alive.com. AstraZeneca is now saying its vaccine proved to be 76% effective in U.S. clinical trials. That is a slight adjustment from Monday when it said the efficacy rate was 79%, so a 3% shift there, and that difference stood out to the National Institute of Health. It wanted to make sure AstraZeneca was not using outdated information. So here is the latest information. The trials show AstraZeneca is 76% effective in preventing symptoms overall but it's 100% effective against severe symptoms that could land a person in a hospital. Their vaccine is 85% effective in preventing symptoms in people 65% and older who are, of course, more vulnerable. So the next step here is their application for emergency use authorization, and if approved, AstraZeneca would become the fourth vaccine in the U.S. to be given that green light. It was a scare for shoppers in Atlanta as they watched a man walk into the Publix at Atlantic Station wearing body armor and openly carrying a rifle. They immediately thought of the grocery store shooting in Colorado on Monday. 
The store in Atlanta had a 22-year-old man with several weapons walk in. It was a Publix grocery store. It happened about 1.30 yesterday afternoon. A shopper told a store manager he saw the man holding a rifle as he walked into the restroom. Police later said that man had two rifles and three handguns. There's no report of him pointing them at anyone, and he never fired a shot. Still after the mass shootings, both in Atlanta and Colorado over the past week, people were nervous and very relieved that nobody was hurt. Yeah, everyone's been pretty scared. Just realizing that there is hate in this world and that's just not going to go away anytime soon. Today, the suspect is in the Fulton County Jail. He's charged with 11 felonies. Right now, community leaders are meeting in Doraville to talk about the impact of hate crimes in the Asian American Pacific Islander community. There has been a significant increase in those crimes since the start of the pandemic. 11 Alive's Maura Siriani has more on the important conversation they hope leads to change. Here in Doraville, city officials want to keep the conversation going and open dialogue with the AAPI community and business leaders right here about their concerns. I mean, we definitely want to hear as far as, you know, the preventive measures that they have in mind or anything that they can share with us that we can relate to our members. The city of Doraville hosted today's forum. AAPI business owners from across the city and county were invited to attend. Today's safety forum put an emphasis on how law enforcement interacts with the AAPI community. The speakers, including DeKalb County Sheriff Melody Maddox and DeKalb Police Chief Chuck Atkinson. The forum comes after the coalition Stop AAPI Hate released its latest national report tracking a rise in hate crimes against the AAPI community since the start of the pandemic. The report tracked nearly 3,800 incidents of hate. They learned women are targeted more than twice as much as men. Months earlier, a specific report addressed Georgia finding 32 incidents of hate. Sheriff Maddox says in light of an uptick in hate crimes targeting Asian Americans, she wants to offer support and says there's no place for hate in DeKalb County. We want to let the Asian community as well as all of the community know that we are here for them and their safety and security is our number one concern and it's a collective effort and we want to be involved more involved in the community and be out there and let them know to, that when they see us if they see something say something and contact us. Residents and members of the community were also in attendance today to listen and were told based on the feedback they received today they may hold additional safety forums in the future. All right Maura thank you. This is this Boulder, Colorado is at the base of the Colorado foothills. These are some of the victims in the shooting at the grocery store. Ten people were killed in a shooting that happened two miles from the University of Colorado campus and more vigils are being held as the community tries to navigate their grief together. And on the day, the suspect is in court for the first time. Alan Genet has the story. As people came together among the crowd in the quiet, lighting a candle, was Christina Mays. I, I don't know how to feel. I don't, my mind is just a blur. The tears flowed as she felt the support around her, powerful support. It's a good thing to see people together. Yeah. She was remembering Ricky Olds, who had befriended her right away when Christina moved to the Boulder store. She always had a smile on her face. She always, she always was so energetic. She was just the loving person that you could even ask for. A bunch of time from skipping down the aisles, you know, because we were bored, or her coming in my department to help because I was so far behind in groceries. Christina brought flowers to the makeshift memorial. I'm super mad. Why Boulder? Like, why, why King Supers? That's why I keep asking myself, like, why? And was there as people shared love and support on Wednesday night? What can we say to you? The only thing I can really ask for is just prayers for her family, prayers for the family that was lost, prayers for the whole store. We have more on that case on 11alive.com. Cases of flu are unusually low this season. That is good news. And some doctors suggest it's because we're wearing masks. So why don't we wear masks every flu season? Our Why Guy has the answer for you next. White only, no black. 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. 
What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Just into our newsroom, an update on the shooting at the Cumberland Mall Tuesday. Authorities have confirmed four people were shot. Initially, Cobb County Police said there were two victims. Now they say two 19-year-olds were shot in the leg and foot. The investigation is still ongoing right now, so a lot of information still coming in. Anyone with information is asked to call the Cobb County Police, and we'll keep updating 11alive.com for you. Today, the Georgia House of Representatives will vote on a controversial voting bill. If it passes, it would limit the time people have to request an absentee ballot, limit where absentee ballot drop boxes are located, and it would impose ID requirements for absentee voting. Republicans control the state house, and they are expected to pass that bill today. Critics have been passionate in their message that they think it's an attempt to suppress people's right to vote. Voting rights is not just one issue alongside other issues. It is fundamental. It is foundational. It is who we say we are as an American people. It's the covenant we have with one another. One person, one vote. And so we've got to do everything we can to pass voting rights. Georgia has been at the forefront of efforts to set new limits on voting across the country. That's after a barrage of false claims by former President Trump. That widespread fraud led to his loss to President Joe Biden in November. Again, the Secretary of State of Georgia, who is a Republican, has said Georgia's election was safe, secure, and fair. People who oppose the proposed voting bill are planning protests across Metro Atlanta today. They already gathered at the governor's mansion this morning. Next, they're expected to rally at Liberty Plaza. Right now, it could happen at any moment. Also, a protest planned at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport at 530. All of this being organized by Protect the Vote Georgia. 12.18, the current time. Time to take a look at that radar. We'll be watching it all afternoon, folks, as those thunderstorms are pushing into our far northwestern counties. Uh, so far, we've had a severe thunderstorm warning up here to our far northwest. And so you're talking about places like Dade Walker County, Tecadusa County, uh, Chattooga County as well. Now starting to see those thunderstorms move into western portions of Fanning and Gilmer County as well. Numerous lightning strikes in western Fanning County, as you can see. As they continue to slide up toward the northwest. And now, 
or north and east rather. And now you can see where we have a another severe thunderstorm warning that's back over toward Alabama as these storms continue to train right on through. Man, it's going to drop some very heavy rain up here to the north as well. Wanted to put a track on this. These storms have a history of moving about 45 miles per hour to the east northeast, and uh, if it holds together, well, we could see this uh, moving up toward uh, Morganton uh, right around looks like 12:35 over toward Carter K around 12:48. If it holds together, Jasper, you'll see it right around uh, 108. And we're talking about some very heavy rain and some lightning strikes associated with a few of these. Will that happen to turn severe? Well, it could. So we're keeping an eye on it uh, as it continues to push over toward the east. Again, that's a history of severe weather. You can see back off to the west of us over toward Alabama and uh, poised to move right now into Polk County. You can see another severe thunderstorm warning has been issued there. So we'll see if it holds together and makes it into our state. So we'll keep you updated on that. Most of the heavy rain will stay up here to the far north, as you can see, where we'll have anywhere from two to maybe three inches in a lot of spots and includes the Atlanta metro area. And so uh, take a look at this. We have a flash flood watch. That means we're watching for the potential for flooding to take place uh, anywhere from one to three inches, generally speaking, but there could be some higher amounts in some spots. So we'll keep you updated as we go along. And also I want you to download our app. We have a QR code we're going to throw on the screen for you. And if you have your phone handy, go ahead and pull out your phone, turn it to your camera mode, hold it up to that QR code, and it'll show you how to download the app and get all the warnings that you need that's going to be popping up in the forecast area, like flash flood warnings that can be popping up as well. Notice the 70s down here to the south, and if we're quickly starting to warm up here a little bit, Atlanta at 69 degrees, 68 in the loop, 61 in Gainesville. You got the cooler air up here to the north and east. And so we'll watch that warm front as it continues to pull further off to the north, and it's that warm front. Once that form get, warm front gets to the north of us, we'll be in between the warm front and the cold front, which is what we call the storm sector, and that is where we'll start to see really the severe weather begin to fire up. And we're talking about tornadoes, folks. Long track tornadoes off to the west of us over toward parts of Mississippi and Alabama, even into parts of Tennessee. For us, we have mainly the enhanced risk, especially over to our north and west. What that means is some of those thunderstorms could produce some hail, some very damaging winds, and also uh, brief tornadoes as well. Expecting that main line to get in here by about 5 o'clock to our far northwestern counties and then make its way down toward the metro area between 8 and 9 o'clock. It will be with us through midnight into about 2 a.m. We're still looking at the potential for more thunderstorms to be around. Then it starts to slide a little further down to the south, and you'll notice by 5 o'clock when you're waking up in the morning, just a few isolated showers left over. We'll even see a few breaks in the clouds once we get toward the afternoon, and a lot of us may be assessing damage that may have taken place in our area. We'll have to be on the lookout for power outages as well. Again, the critical time would be 5 p.m. through 2 a.m. for any tornadoes or hail that will form in our forecast area. We'll keep you updated here at 11live.com. Cheryl? Thank you, Chesley. Masks, as we know, help slow the spread of COVID and can help stop other airborne viruses. Doctors are now seeing a milder than usual flu season and see masks as a potential reason why. At least one study suggests masks could help lower the spread of influenza every year. So why aren't they more common? Here's our why guy. There have been moments throughout our history when the eyes have it. Outbreaks of the flu have at least temporarily popularized face coverings that hide everything but the eyes. In Japan, masks are part of the daily culture, especially during flu and allergy season. It's part of the culture in these places that if you know that you have an infection, that you cover your face with a mask to prevent yourself from sharing it with others. There are studies that suggest in certain situations, masks could help slow the spread of the yearly flu. So let's look at why they're not part of our routine during cold and flu season. The COVID-19 pandemic changed the look of America. Dr. John Brooks of the CDC points out that while there are differences between the flu and the coronavirus, they're both transmitted by droplets. A big difference is that someone with COVID-19 can spread the virus when they're not feeling sick and don't realize they have it. That's typically not the case with the flu. The uh, conventional wisdom is that you are not having a fever. It's not going to be transmitted to other people. It's not contagious. During times of heightened flu activity, the CDC does recommend masks for anyone who shows symptoms until they're isolated, as well as for healthcare workers dealing with flu patients. Dr. Brooks suspects that some people may choose to wear masks during future flu seasons. Among populations that are very vulnerable, the staff and the residents in a nursing home, for instance, might wear masks during the flu season. Healthcare experts continue to promote vaccines as the best way to avoid illness during flu season, along with hand washing and covering the nose and mouth whenever you cough or sneeze.
Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with All right, we do have a th severe thunderstorm warning in our forecast area now. It's over toward Port Polk County right now. That storm is moving at about uh, 55 miles per hour. Uh, it will last until 1245. Put a track on this. Moving at 55 miles per hour could be over toward Cedartown around 1236. Could be pushing into Frisk Creek around 1245. If it holds together, make it up toward Taylorsville right around to uh, 1254. So we'll continue to watch this. We also have a, a tornado watch that has been issued for our far northwestern counties will continue to watch this and monitor it. and if we need to break in we will we'll be back right after this had to leave they were told to get out white only no black 1912 all but one issue has been erased we haven't had none up here since the first of the century What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need. With all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Live's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading. The Olympic torch relay has begun in Japan. It's the moment Olympians have been waiting for after waiting an extra year to compete. It was very, uh emotionally uh, disappointing because I everything was set on that we my coach and I had a four year uh, plan defending a title and to have this rug almost slip from underneath you and and to almost rewrite the training rewrite uh, realign the, the thinking and and the process but I, I just think having that thinking that we're all in the same boat we're all struggling you know in the same way um, was actually the thing that got us through it more of our conversation with Christian Taylor coming up at five and six. Thanks for watching. We hope you have a good day.
On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new